limit my racism. You're, you're recording, right? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> you're such a dick. I can't wait for you to start driving and I do the recording on you. Oh, man, that's going to be never if I keep working close to home. <laughs> that is true. All right. We're on our way to Rock Canada Cup. I'm joined by Aiden, Hi. other Jason, and Jimmy. Um, and questions this week come from Malcolm Rush and a David Logan. Uh, so we'll, we're on we're on the way to Whitby, and we're going to start right into it here um, with David Logan's question. Jason, every man has me thinking of a generics-only format. Is that feasible, or uh, would everyone run Bat Night? What would you run? All right, so for background, the, what I'm calling every man is that common only format that we tried the big tournament the one time. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna try to make that a thing. That was fun. And well, yeah, it was a lot of fun, and like to, and and they came, participants from the event, so. Yeah. And then they came out with Cable and the Deadpool X-Force thing that was common. I, yeah, but I still think that Cable and that Batman Beyond are beatable. Oh, well, yeah. yeah. Anyway, but long story short, uh, David Logan says, what about generics only? So, I mean, like that's already hard to define. To a certain degree, uh, you'd have to actually make a manual list of that. First problem. Yeah. Uh, second problem: if you keep it modern only, like I'm doing with the all common format, that's um, I think you get you get down to like literally a number of figures you can count on your hands. Because <laughs> I mean, you basically got cops from the Batman set. Suited um, henchmen. Suited hen well, well, Yeah. Suited henchmen. Ex students. Ex students. Ex trainees. Um, but I mean, the, the aliens from the Star Trek set would be there, so you'd have your Telosians and your um, um, Tellarites and Andorians, but I mean, yeah. they're not fantastic, but I mean... No. So I, it's very limited, so you'd have to go Golden Age with that, but then with, with Golden Age, there's mindless ones from the the Giant old X-Men, X-Men set, Giant Size X-Men. They're like 100 points a pop. Yeah, they were <laughs> like Domino and they were... I think they'd end up owning the format too if they went golden. So, if, I, yeah, if it was modern, it would be Bat Knight runs everything, and I that, that I kind of agree with that. And if it was golden, I think mindless ones would probably show up. It's such a hard format to define hardcore, though. It is because why would Bat Knight be generic? Uh, because there's like, multiples of them. It's a variant in, in, in comic, like Batman oh, had an army of Bat Knights. Wow. Yeah, so basically anything with real name Various would be considered a generic figure. So like the mermaids and the parademons and the, uh, yeah. and the, uh, God, there was something else that was in that set that I can't remember now. Atlanteans. Yeah, so, like, long story short, yeah, would be, that would be about it. Uh, if you'd have all of your werewolves and such. Yeah, there'd be werewolves, like, half, half the undead set would be legal. <laughs> so, I mean, it's not... Uh, foot soldiers. Foot soldiers. Foot soldiers would be generic, yeah. Well, they have a lot of good ones. Yeah. Well, yeah, so I guess yeah, there's so a lot of, theoretically it could be yeah, done, you, but I mean, it would be like the same team. Well, the new ones, especially, the, the unplugged ones. ones. Yeah. They, they're, they're free attack. Yep. Uh, remember we played with them? I haven't used those yet. I'm excited to. Yeah, mm-hmm. I do. Okay. Well, if you have a lot of pogs. And the pogs get killed and they just collect the, the tokens. You can get free attacks all the time. That's true. That's true. Yeah, you get... I, what kind of pogs would be considered gen- well I mean if we went golden age we could probably use the fear itself ones generic lawyer generic civilian generic <laughs> well then they have like dwarves and elves and stuff with the Lord of the Rings stuff yeah I yeah so I personally feel like just to increase the number of characters you're allowed you'd have to make a golden age if you kept it modern age it would be boring yeah alright uh, next up Malcolm Rush what <laughs> All right, this one's a weird one. Uh, what are some of your favorite HeroClix podcasts you listen to over the years, and are they still on the air? Uh, for me, it's Dial H from HeroClix. In fact, if it wasn't for that series, I wouldn't. There wouldn't be a Married with Clicks. Aiden, um, I don't partake of podcasting or anything of that nature. Um, I watch Jason's videos. <laughs> Plug. Plug. That's it. Oh, and Scott Porter. So I mean, I, <laughs> but those are more Scott. videos than. Yeah. Podcast. That's so the I content think. you take in. Okay. Jimmy? Yeah, I also watch the Mary the Click stuff, and I've seen, uh, I've heard the Click stuff a few times. And yep. that's about it. Okay. Not the same. Mary the Clicks. Uh, videos are not much of the podcast. Yeah. I, I do take in, what else was it? It was Dark Logos' other one. Um, 
Shoot, I forgot the name of it now, though. Two Clicks from KO? No, Two Clicks from KO is Aaron Cantu's. Uh, Edward Sheldon's was... Uh, shoot. Because it used to be the um, the rock one, the rock roundup. I can't remember what that was called. The quarry. It used to be the quarry. But then he has his other one. Um, and I forgot the name of it. Holy shit. It's too early in the morning for me. <laughs> it's too early in the morning for this The point show. is that he saw yeah. something that he liked or he heard something that he liked and he used to listen to it all the time. I still listen to Edward when he, whenever he puts something out. So um, I feel like it's something to do something to... Uh, ah. Look it up, it's Malcolm. too fucking early in the morning for me. <laughs> Malcolm, look it up. <laughs> All right. Uh, but yeah, everything I'm, I I listen to is still on the air at this point. So, Which segments do you like on those podcasts? Well, I'm glad I picked Dial H for Hero Clicks. Because <laughs> uh, it, it's, uh, I do like bad, their Bad Samaritan thing. where Bad Samaritan is a game they play where... They choose a hero click and they have to ask like 20 questions about it, but they're limited in the types of questions that they get. Uh, and then you have to guess what the figure is based on very limited information. I, me and Amber actually got a chance to take place, uh, take part in that on one of their episodes uh, back in the day. Uh, and then, but I'm also, I, I can't remember what the other one was called, but they've changed hosts. They don't run it anymore, but they used to take like a really old hero click and, you know, lay it all out for you and ask what would you pay for this figure and it would be like a 49 cent figure on on troll and toad i think the first one that i remember them doing was uh it was solomon grundy it was like the veteran solomon grundy with 11 clicks of health and just ridiculous length of dial i think it was like 66 points somebody's like i would pay five bucks for that it's like 49 cents on troll and toad oh, or something shit. <laughs> oh, that was really cool all right in uh, i don't Segments. I, I again. I don't really watch. Well, if it's married with clicks, what show is you do? You, what show do you? Usually, like? it's the rules update and stuff like that that I try to because you guys get a good handle on that. It's like okay, I, I don't need to. Please. I can have somebody explain that to me. <laughs> Back um, when we knew how to play the game, we had a good handle on that. <laughs> I also like your unboxings. The unboxing stuff when uh, when you guys get it, it's funny because you guys know you got the comic background and you know the figures from it. Um, so it's like, oh my god, we're finally getting a whatever. I can't wait to see how you guys react. Well, I mean, Amber not so much because she's not a fan, but the Star Trek Next Generation stuff is going to be fantastic. I can't wait to see you guys do that. All right. Yes. Jimmy. I really like watching the Metafix that you guys do. I, you know, it's about an hour, usually an hour and a half or something, and I, I watch it most of the time. Oh, the Meta Lab. Or Meta Lab. Yeah. Uh, Meta Lab. Yeah, Metafix is when you... I teach soft skills in Heroclix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Meta Lab. <laughs> You have the people come on and they talk about how they did the tournaments and what's yeah. coming up and previews. Yeah, I really enjoy that one for sure. Cool. Jay? Uh, probably the same. Any kind of YouTube video that teaches me something new. Team building. Yeah. Team yeah. building. <laughs> that all important, all encompassing aspect that we need to know about the yeah. game. Uh, do we? Have, I, I guess everybody still listens to the ones we all talked about in question one, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and none of us have one that's off the air, so I guess that next question is... Well, okay. I mean, there's a couple of Heroclix channels that have kind of gone gone the way of the Dodo to a certain degree. Um, I remember, like, it was a double trigger for me that Dial, Dial H for Heroclix and Glass Cabinet Studios both kind of put me on the direction of making Married with Clicks. Uh, but Glass Cabinet kind of stopped doing any hero clicks content and i'm not sure what I, I i don't look at the background and the whys and everything like that and how these things happen um i yeah so i i, re, I wish black glass cabinet could get back out there and making interesting stuff but uh, <laughs> there's nothing that's really i can say that they don't do so it's it really is a matter of I don't have an answer. Fair enough. Are you guys about the same? Yeah, pretty much. All right. All right, next well, up. You know, you know what oh. else I watch? What? That happy little hero clicks guy with the rules. Sometimes if I don't know exactly how rules interact, he, he has a good little YouTube video. Oh, cool. 
he, you know, he's he's shown up in our chat, our live chat on the live shows occasionally. I've been meaning to watch his channel, and I know he did a crossover with Mr. Clicks Fix recently. So yeah, I think, I think we covered question six on this one, which was any shout outs for other podcasts. Go, yeah. <laughs> uh, um, all right. So advice to anyone who wants to start a new one: just start. Like, you go back to video number one on our channel, it's terrible. And you, it'll get better on its own. <laughs> it's it's a natural progression on these things. You know, you start uh, you and watch, watch other content while you're doing it, you know. Look at your own and then say, okay, what are we doing that they aren't? Like, I think my first ever video on this, uh, on the channel, was not even edited. We didn't add title cards or anything. We just took a video and went, put it on YouTube, let's see what happens. <laughs> And then we were like, oh, I have an iPod, uh, on, on a MacBook. Maybe I should throw on like iMovie and try to add some title cards and crap like that to it. And, like, honestly, if you go back to the early days, it's a trash channel. <laughs> it still kind of is. We're getting better, but there's a uh, there's a lot we could be doing. Uh, our production and, values have gone up. Uh, pretty, well, I mean, yeah, we got money now for that. <laughs> Thanks, patrons. All right. Well, I guess the next one's uh, all of our game design. Oh yeah. Sorry. Uh, is there anything, any advice you guys think you well, could offer? I have one. So I'm not sure about that. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, it's not about but, it. but I would, I would say that you should um, see what the HeroClix community is talking about, and then maybe make videos on what the the hottest topic is or the hottest figure. Is. Yeah. Cool. Uh, my last piece of advice is avoid controversy at all points. <laughs> let it let it kind of take care of itself. I've I've seen like I, as a as also a magic content observer, I I watch people kind of address the controversies. Like just leave it. It is not your business. All right. Uh, we continue now with the mechanics questions from uh, Makarosh. Over the years, WizKids has introduced many different game mechanics. Which ones do you, have you loved and hated over the years? I think I'm pretty uh, vocal about my hatred of the team abilities. <laughs> or not team abilities, team bases, rather. Uh, team bases. Team bases. Um, I am a big fan of, uh, of the Colossal Retaliation, the small click dial uh, colossal characters it just it, it's more of my collection I could be using anytime I could be using more stuff I'm cool with that Aiden oh um, I your stuff yeah I agree with what you're saying I never got the whole team based thing I have a lot of them I just I've never used them um, so it's really me like I don't know what the hell I'm doing uh, I like shifting focus that's fun um but also as detrimental. I love the ID cards. I love the ID cards for uh, for as a mechanic. I think they're fantastic. They should do more of them. Um, I think they've teased us a little bit too much with the uh, the Arkham Asylum ones that we got at the con for in Ottawa. Yep. Because um, it'd be really interesting to see them come out with a penguin one where that somebody you know you can't use outwit within three squares. <laughs> or uh, or something to that effect. Um, what do I hate? I never hate's a strong word. I never understood. <laughs> I never understood because I never used it and I didn't understand the need for it. The fucking duo attack split and merge thing. I'm like I don't understand this. I've never used it. I'm never going to use it. I'm. Yay, I've got two characters on the thing. Yay, I've got the duo attack when it was still something. But I'm not going to, like, sit there and be like, okay, well, mathematically, I can use this, this, and this. That's it. All right. Jimmy. Personally, I don't like ID cards at all. Go to hell. Just for five points, <laughs> you can just call out anything. Silver bullets. And especially if you're on your last click, and then you call out a guy on his top click. Seems kind of weird, and you don't really just call in someone out of nowhere in a hero fix, in a superhero fight. Maybe in the video games. <laughs> um, and but I really like the batteries actually. When I, we first started playing, the batteries were a big thing, and I really enjoyed that mechanic. It was really fun that, that uh, they each did something different and brought something different to the table, and you can make so many different diverse teams to go with the batteries as well. Yeah, but that's about it. All right, Jason. Like Aiden, I'm a big fan of the shifting focus. I like the way the Deadpool shifting focus. Um, Batman, Superman were fun to play. Um, I'm not a fan of the the colossal retaliation. Um, I feel like some of those. 
those Colossus just come and rip things apart for 10 points. It's, it's crazy sometimes. <laughs> like, every, everybody likes something that somebody else in the car here hates. It's kind of <laughs> hilarious. <It's funny. laughs> Alright, uh, we're just, we're actually in Pickering now, so, you know. Just have to verify where I get off and get up. Yeah. Uh, how much longer do you think we have? Okay, we can probably throw in one more question then. All right, so next one we have. WizKids has stopped using some of these mechanics. Which ones would you want WizKids to bring back? And what would you have them make better to fit for today's game? Uh, I'm actually gonna jump on Jimmy's because I think they should bring back something akin to the power batteries or a resource that helps to increase the diversity of the game. I mean, don't get me wrong. Right now we're in a very diverse meta game and that I think is really cool. Um, but it would be neat to see something that can make, you know, more teams different, more characters viable, because part of the small problem we have in the game, and it's not as noticeable, um, is that there's a lot of useless characters when it comes to competitive play. Uh, like, there's just figures you look at and go, I, I can spend those points better um, in almost every case. So, And I think the addition of, um, of some kind of resource uh, like the power batteries or akin to uh, wood, help to make some of those like ah that character is useless into something that's super super viable that's my thought Aiden uh, I, I like your answer <laughs> um, it, there is probably something out there I'm really rather surprised that when we did get the when we started getting the X-Men ID cards and when we started getting and when we got that let's be perfectly blunt useless title ID car, uh, title character Professor X who's only good for piloting the Blackbird and if you have the Blackbird then that's what it's for uh, that we didn't get a Cerebro type element that allows you to do something akin to um, round table? the round table or something I really enjoyed the round table I thought it was a great idea again it allowed me to use different elements you know all of a sudden, that Blades Claws Fang guy has flurry because you got your Swordsman ID card. Yep. Um, and it allowed you to again use more uh, figures from your team. So I would I would like something like that. I enjoyed the Quinjet. Well, I remember playing with you with the Quinjet a lot, yeah. and it was I just we played was, super casual games with it though. <laughs> well, it was super casual with it, but it was fun to play yeah. with. Um, I guess that would be it. I, I don't. I started late, so there was things like soaring and some other weird stuff that happened back when it was like recarded yeah. that I never got into. So if there's something like, let's say for example, soaring that people thought was a good idea and think was a good idea and for some reason they've removed it, maybe that's something that's investigatable, but I don't know. Alright. Jimmy. Yeah. That mechanic was good. Once they took off, you could only have one on each character. When you could have like five on a character, that wasn't cool. But just one to give you know a character that's not that great a defense boost or a power or maybe a hypersonic to bring characters that might not be meta to the meta 